let's get this ball on the road. Hey guys, I'm Jackie. Hold on. Hey guys, so I know I've been saying that I'm gonna record and I haven't took the time today because I actually had time to do it to tell you guys about my pregnancy experience, labor and delivery, and postpartum. Um, just keep in mind that this is my experience. So everyone is different. Your experience might have been different or will be different. Let's do this. So we found out we were pregnant about a year ago. It was November 13th exactly. Uh, how we found out we were pregnant one morning i just woke up really nauseous and he told me to take a test actually that's not how it went his breath actually bothered me sorry babe i know he's gonna hate me for this he got me a test and i don't even think i had put up my pants yet when he came into the bathroom and literally snatched the test away from me i remember when i saw it got the late line ones and literally after i washed my hands did all my what i needed to do i walked out there and i said it's negative and he's like no it's not it's positive and i'm like no -uh, the line is very faint like I, it's negative and he's like you're pregnant and i looked at it again and i feel like i was in such denial to the point where the line looked faint i know like i posted about it on my instagram i felt like i just wasn't ready to be a mom I was scared. I went went through a bunch of emotions. We both did. This video might be a little emotional just because I never really talked about it with anyone. Obviously, my boyfriend and I experienced it in that moment and the only other person that knew about it was my sister. Just keep in mind this is my experience. This is the thoughts and feelings that I was going through during this time. I'm sorry. I'm 23 years old. I don't feel like I'm really young, but I don't feel like I'm old enough to be ready for a family. I felt like I was not ready for a family. Me and my man had just started. Our relationship was so new. I felt like I wanted to experience our relationship for longer. So when I found out I was pregnant, I was kind of really upset. I started to cry because I was really, really scared. And much told him that I wasn't ready to be a mom. And... I looked at him straight in the eyes and it's like, I feel like he knew what I was talking about. I'm not really proud of it because at the time I knew a couple people who had lost and other people who were trying. I just felt like very undeserving to have a baby or to even get pregnant. I didn't plan to have a kid. I was nowhere near ready and I just felt like a complete asshole because even though our baby was not planned, I could tell that he he wanted to keep it. So I was like, you know, I'm not ready to be a mom. And he was like, okay, well, let's take another test and we'll make an appointment and we'll see how far along you are. If it has a heartbeat, we're going to keep it. If it doesn't then it's your body it's your decision so we took another test and it practically came up it was a not pregnant pregnant once and instantly said i was pregnant so i for some reason i feel like i didn't cry the second time that i took it because i was kind of already like oh my gosh like i can't believe it i'm gonna be a mom i made an appointment right away and i couldn't tell anybody I, we didn't tell anybody until like a couple of days and the first person who i told was my sister because i just couldn't handle knowing that i was and i just needed advice and my sister had just had a baby so he was, he actually had just turned one and when i told her she was really happy and it's crazy because my relationships have been terrible and my boyfriends have never been accepted by my family she literally was the first person that told me that i had nothing to worry about as far as my partner leaving me or not being there to support me she knew that Kurt, my man, was going to stick around and make sure that me and the baby were okay. And then when I told her all the thoughts and feelings that I was thinking, she just literally made me realize, like, this happened for a reason. And I've been through, like, a really, really bad relationship, mentally, physically, and emotionally abusive. So for me, I was just scared that I was going to become a mom and, you know, he was going to be in my life for, like, the rest of my life. So I was just kind of, like... I don't know what to think considering to get you know rid of it you know it wasn't his, it wasn't the baby's fault it just it happened and then it, it for me it is what it is 
So we went to our appointment and I was about to be seven weeks pregnant. As soon as I hit seven and a half weeks, I was sick. I couldn't get out of bed for three months. I was living off of salted crackers and ginger ale. I had the worst morning sickness ever. Morning sickness is literally like a hangover every single day. It was the worst time of my life. I remember hugging the toilet, telling my man how much I hated him because he was putting me through that. People reacted pretty positively about it once we told everyone. Um, we obviously told our close family and friends before posting it. Everyone was literally happy. My mom even congratulated me and I was terrified to tell my mom out of everybody. His family seemed to have accepted it as well and I don't know. It, it just, I got so much positive feedback for me being pregnant with him that I was literally like, well, I think this was meant to be, you know. During this process of being pregnant, I thought I would have closer friends at the time. I had two very close friends who are actually no longer my friends anymore. I just feel like pregnant people get the shitty end of the stick. Practically, I felt like everybody thought that I wasn't human anymore and couldn't have a social life. Obviously, I can't drink. Pregnant people still have feelings, you know? We still wanna go out, we still wanna get invited, we still wanna, even if it's out to eat, if it's just to get out of the house and have somebody to talk to, you know? This is such an important time in your life and you just need advice, you need to be able to talk to someone about it. Or you, friends who have pregnant friends pregnant or just moms in general just be there be patient with pregnant people and moms my pregnancy actually taught me a lot about people and just the type of friends that i was keeping around and men don't really understand what you're going through they're experiencing it with you but they're not the ones who are growing the baby inside i hope that for my next pregnancy i have friends that are willing to hang out with me even though i'm big and fat so another thing about my pregnancy was i've been skinny my whole life i've typically weighed between 95 to 100 pounds it was actually a really big insecurity of myself being so skinny that I actually, right before I got pregnant, I decided to go on like a fitness journey. And I was going to the gym practically every other day. I started slowly gaining weight. I was in a really abusive relationship where I lost so much weight. I was, I think, 100 pounds by the time I left the relationship. By the time I met my man, I was like 105 and I was stuck between 105 and 104. See, the happy weight helped me gain weight. My goal was 115 pounds which i did reach and then literally a couple days later i found out i was pregnant i gained about 40 pounds i think with my pregnancy by the end of my pregnancy i was 157 pounds i had gained weight in every place of my body i was really insecure being pregnant but i felt not to the point where I hated myself underneath my skin. Surprisingly, I actually really loved my belly. I just felt huge and a lot of people told me I looked good and then there was a large amount of people that told me that I had gained a lot of weight and that I looked huge. Just advice to friends who have friends that are pregnant Keep your comments to yourself as far as their weight. Tell them, oh, you look so small. Oh, you look so big. At the beginning of my pregnancy, I barely showed because of how thin, thin I am. And then on top of that, I, was, I had really bad morning sickness. So I had lost a lot of weight again. And people kept telling me, oh, you, like, you can't even tell you're pregnant. Like, where's your belly? I was already like four months by the time I found out what we were having. And I still didn't show. It practically didn't pop until I was like six months. I was really insecure about it as well because I was just kind of like... Like, I had a little pouch, but it wasn't a full pouch to the point where, like, you looked cute, you know? It's kind of like, it looked like I was bloated, and it's, it just, you just want the big belly already. And then once you have the big belly, you don't want the big belly anymore. <laughs> At that point, none of my clothes fit me. I lived in leggings and dresses mainly. I'm really happy that I was pregnant during the summer because dresses were my lifesavers. I absolutely loved dresses when I was pregnant, which is crazy because I hated dresses. By the time I had the baby, I lost 10 pounds. I lost all my baby weight kind of fast. I mean, I'm still like nicely 
you know, filled. Like, I still have a, a little bit of cheeks. Actually, my man was really, really attracted to me more being pregnant and thick than when, before we met, which is crazy. But you know what? I can't complain because there's some women don't get that lucky towards the beginning and the very end is when I kind of was insecure and really uncomfortable because I was getting told that I was huge and that my baby was going to be really big. Uh, that's another thing. Don't ever comment about how someone's baby is going to act or what they're about to experience or just in general like telling them like you look huge, your baby's going to be huge. Don't just don't even say anything. Congratulate them. Tell them they look great and that they can't wait to meet your baby. You don't know when you're gonna you're ready to be a mom. Everyone's different. I feel like some pe some women are born to be moms and other women just don't have any idea what they're doing. I feel like I was in between. Luckily, my sister had just had a baby a year before me, so I feel like I experienced that with her. She kind of helped me know what I was gonna get myself into. I knew that our situations might be different. You know that everyone's different and every experience is different and everybody handles things differently. So I just felt like it could have been the same or it could have not been the same. I know we went through a lot of similar things that she helped me, you know, get comfortable with, give me advice and, and comfort me. You just never know how your experience is, go is gonna go until you go through it. So my labor and delivery was actually a lot smoother than I thought. Is it what I expected? No. You can't really know, you don't know what to expect when you're about to go into labor or deliver. I had some girls tell me that their labor and delivery was absolutely terrible and they don't want to have any more kids. I've had other women that told me, oh, it was a piece of cake. I wanted to be pregnant right away. For me, I feel like I was in between. It's definitely an adrenaline rush. It's more like, oh my God. I'm gonna have a baby kind of thing a couple of weeks before I went into labor so I was about maybe 32 weeks I think I started to like have nightmares and actually freak out because I knew that it was right around the corner that I was gonna have him and I literally cried a lot because I was so scared I was terrified of giving birth my pain tolerance is like a zero so for me to push a baby out of there was absolutely terrifying. I watched videos, I looked up a bunch of stuff. Like, I didn't even take birth classes. It's like kind of pointless to me. I felt like going to birth class would have been a waste of my time. At the end of the day, you, you don't know how your labor and your delivery is gonna go. So there's no way to prepare for it. Anything can go wrong, anything can go right. It's one of those things where you just have to experience it and that's it. Yeah, going to birth classes is going to teach you a few things that's nice to know. I had an app where it told me everything, like what to expect. Actually, especially when I was starting to get close to delivery or, you know, labor, it lets you know, like, just be aware this might happen. You just have to wait, it's a waiting game. And I feel like I got the whole birth classes shoved down my throat a lot. That's another thing you can't do with pregnant people. You can't shove stuff like that down their throat like if they want to do it they won't do it you know let them decide as a as a couple as a single parent you know whatever let them decide if they want to go to birth classes or not if you're into that cool like i said that's everybody's different this is what i think by the time i turned 38 weeks i wanted him out i literally was so uncomfortable to the point where on my last close to my last appointment appointment i told my doctor if i could try naturally induce if you're pregnant, just in general, you're a mom. Obviously, you know what naturally inducing is. If you don't, look it up. There's different ways to naturally induce, which means to naturally go into labor without getting induced. I was terrified to get induced. I heard that hurts more. I lost my mucus plug on a Saturday. I'm not going to go into detail about what the mucus plug is, but if you don't know what it is, look it up. If the next day, Sunday, I woke up at 6 a.m. with stomach cramps. It kind of felt like when you're on your period where you're kind of crampy, and I didn't know if they were contractions or if they were practicing can't text my sister right away and I told her, you know, what, what do your contractions feel like? Literally, like, you'll know you will know when you are in labor so i waited um they were kind of painful but i was able to bear it the next day monday morning like at 9 a.m i woke up and i was literally like i don't think i can handle the pain or not so we went to the hospital 
My hospital is not very close. It's 45 minutes away to an hour, depending on the traffic. So he went like at 9 a.m. And once I got there, they checked me. It's not even close to being dilated at all. They sent me home. I was really upset because I was actually in pain. At this point, I was like, okay, they actually feel like really bad cramps. And like I said, my pain tolerance is like a zero. So that night, we got dinner, Pizza Hut. <laughs> it was like 10 o'clock at night, and I was literally like, I already knew when another one was gonna come at that point is when i texted my sister or actually a few hours before that is when i texted my sister i'm like it's like i know when another one's gonna hit so that's when she was like okay then you are having contractions we literally had contractions all day I timing them and i was typically like seven six minutes apart you can't go to the hospital until you're five minutes apart but like the hours just dragged by the time it was like 10 o'clock I was already dreading another one coming. I, I would grip onto like my sheets. I was already crying, bouncing on a freaking medicine ball. I was walking around. I, w I was just trying to do anything possible to cope with the pain. I ate Pizza Hut while having contractions. Around 11, I was like, I don't, I can't do this. Like, so we called the hospital. They asked me how far apart my contractions were and I told them they were like six, six seven minutes apart. And she was like, you can't come in until they're five minutes apart. It's like, okay. I decided to walk down my driveway at 12 o'clock a.m. In the middle of the night, me and my man walked up and down my driveway for like half an hour. He was dragging me to the point where I was like, stop. I felt like I was gonna oh my god she's gonna come out he was timing my contraction he literally said they were like four or five minutes apart so we show up to the hospital they check me i was like barely a centimeter over and she was like either you go home or you walk for an hour so i was like i'm not going home i'll walk for an hour if i have to so i walked for an hour and then they checked me again and i was barely two centimeters so she was like okay either you walk for another hour again or you go home so i was like you know what i'll walk for as long as i can i'm not going home so i walked for another hour at this point i was literally crouching down like i was in so much pain was crying like i literally was so out of it i don't even think i was 100 percent there all I remember was that my man was like trying to make jokes with me and I would just look at him like, dude, just shut up. Best way to cope with my pain was either bouncing on a medicine ball, rocking in a chair, or walking. I could not stand sitting down or laying down. I think it hurt even more. By the time I was done my hour, they checked me and they were like, okay, you're barely three centimeters over. We're gonna admit you. I'll call your doctor and let him know that you're in active labor so i was it was like three in the morning i was like thank you jesus then i was like oh my gosh i need to go to sleep it was completely out of it and you know when you're so tired you start hallucinating or saying weird stuff so i was like saying weird stuff and they like injected me with like a i can't remember what kind of medicine it was but it was just to control the contractions a little bit and then I got moved to the labor and delivery room. It was like seven o'clock at night. My RN came in and checked me and she was like, oh my gosh, you're like six centimeters dilated. And I was just like, oh really? Like, wow. And she was like, I'm so surprised. Like, you know, do you want the epidural? And I was like, hell yeah. I bring the epidural right now. I'm not trying to feel like this anymore. He was like, you can practically do it without medicine. And I'm like, hell no, I'm not pushing a big baby out of my... As soon as that thing kicked in, I did not feel a single thing. Now, I know a lot of women are against the epidural. It's completely your decision what you want to do. For me, I just did not want to feel anything. Give me the epidural and that's it. Thing. I literally was laughing, giggling, talking all over again. I felt like I I wasn't even in labor. So as soon as they broke my water, I started getting contractions. My contractions were two minutes apart and I didn't even know any. Which by the way, if you are ever wondering what it feels like to get your water broken, it literally feels like you peed yourself, but you can't control it coming out. It's just, it feels very warm. You know when you break your water. She came in and she checked me around like 8.30 or something. And she said that I was eight centimeters open. And she was like, all right, let's practice pushing. So I literally pushed once and I remember everyone. It was, it was my man, my sister, and my mom in the room. And they were like, oh my gosh. Like their face just like lit up. And I was like, what? They're like, 
he's right there he has a lot of hair and i was like no way and i was just like oh my gosh like freaking out low-key but like really excited i was shaking because of how excited i was and like just it's just so much adrenaline even though the time goes so slow it feels like it's like this like you literally after you're done you forget absolutely about everything pushed again she was like okay i'm gonna go get the doctor because you're practically like theirs i pushed for 20 minutes and he was out Gabriel was about 19 hours as soon as he popped out i was like i didn't i don't even think i cried i didn't cry when i first saw him i was more like in shock it was just one of those things where it's like oh my god like oh my god oh my god then it like hit me and i was like i'm a mom like this is my baby i grew this baby inside of me <laughs> it's the most amazing experience ever you guys absolutely adored him i couldn't stop looking at him everybody tells you to sleep when the baby sleeps and i just couldn't <laughs> if i could i mean like i would do it again just to experience that moment again even though being a mom is so hard i would love to do it again yes we do plan to have more kids in the future uh, it wasn't easy so i'll uh, obviously we'll keep that in mind when we have our next and we will plan it out a little bit better postpartum honestly i think that was the hardest thing a lot of women get postpartum anxiety or postpartum depression after having a baby i used to have depression back in the day i didn't really get diagnosed with it but i know that i had it it was one of those things where like you couldn't get out of bed you didn't eat um, you were sad all the time and you didn't know why my depression and anxiety came from my relationships because of how bad they were once i had the baby i did have the baby blues it was a it is a real thing when they tell you that you know you'll get them all i did was cry all the time every single day from the moment he was born i feel like i wasn't really as connected with him at first because i was so deep into my feelings he questioned absolutely everything that i did i felt like i was the most terrible horrible mom in the universe breastfeeding was the hardest thing on this planet if you are able to breastfeed just in general for like a year or two good job because i swear breastfeeding was the hardest for me i absolutely hated it I feel terrible feeling this way because they say that breastfeeding you're supposed to feel a lot more connected to your baby and I just w did not feel that way at all. If anything, I felt very frustrated in so much pain. I was willing to give up but I didn't just for him because I wanted him to get the best. I wanted to do everything possible, anything that will benefit him in the long run. I was able to do it for almost four I lied for about three months close to four now that i think about it i kind of miss it for me i was very self-conscious breastfeeding him in public i wish i wasn't because i feel like i would have also continued to be breastfeeding so really stressful on you because all you're worried about is am i making enough milk and i was like you know what formula is gonna have to do like when i would have too many distractions me and him could not bond the way that i wanted to you know i can't be too hard on myself about it i was really hard on myself because it was right before winter hit and i feel like breast milk is so beneficial when they get sick that's another thing being a mom and pregnant you put yourself down a lot you start questioning things about the way you parent or just in general the things that you do for your kids actually everything changes you guys i cannot stress that enough and you won't know until you're pregnant and you go through it you will understand what these crazy women or moms are talking about as far as like um, postpartum anxiety and depression i had posted a few things on my instagram regarding to that he got diagnosed with postpartum anxiety for me I would get panic attacks whenever I would go anywhere alone with him. It was to the point where I would sit in my car and I would want to cry or like I felt like I needed to throw up. That's how bad it was. I just would get really shaky. I was also thinking like, what if we crash? What if he gets hurt? What if he starts crying in front of everyone? What if I forgot something? What if people looking at me all weird because, you know, he starts screaming? I was thinking about everything. And then when I would go places, I feel like everybody was staring at me. I was about to be three months postpartum and I was literally like, I cannot deal with this anymore me and my partner were fighting i was constantly telling myself that i was a terrible mom that i didn't deserve to be a mom and i was constantly saying that you know my baby deserved another mom and deserved a better family it was just really bad i just was tearing myself down so i got on medication and i was actually really really upset about getting on my medication because i feel like that was like 
finally the confirmation that I had postpartum anxiety and depression. For me, it was really hard to accept because I didn't want to get on medicine. I, it's like I, I had been through depression and all that before and I was able to cope with it by exercising. But since I was still recovering from delivery, I couldn't hit the gym like I, I used to. I couldn't just leave my kid to go to the gym. It's just everything absolutely changed. So I'm horrible with change. And for me, it was really hard to manage all at once. Medicine, it made me feel a hundred times better. I feel great. I mean, I still feel things. I still get kind of sad some days, but I'm definitely not indulgent in my negative thoughts like I used to. Whenever I think negative, I always try and get, try and take the positive out of the situation. My man is a huge support system. You know, he's always been there. He always makes sure that me and the baby are okay, especially me. I'm just really thankful that it didn't get worse as far as other moms. And I feel like if you are experiencing like anxiety or depression, you should definitely talk to somebody about it or definitely consider talking to your doctor. I started blogging about my situations. I started kind of talking to other moms on social media. I actually became more friends with moms online than I have in real life. It's kind of sad, but for me, it's been a coping experience. It's the only way that I can manage. Don't really talk to anybody on a daily basis because I feel like my non-moms or non-pregnant women don't really understand me or the things that I go through every day. It's really hard talking about your baby and your baby only in your mom life because it gets old to people. It gets kind of like, oh man, my kid's awake. Hold on. Sorry guys, my my bubba's just woke up. Are you still see? Don't grab onto my hair. <gasps> Say hi. So yeah, that's um practically everything, you guys. Hope this video isn't long and annoying. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to DM me or message or email me. You don't have to subscribe or like this. If you do, cool. If not, it's okay. Thank you for listening. Say bye.